Good afternoon. We are so excited to be able to present today our regular board meeting for December 8th, 2022. I am Tanika Harris, Director of Communication and Community Relations. I am excited. There's so, such great work that we have uh, that we want to report out, some wonderful announcements, as well as uh, items that we would love to get your feedback on. So Chairman Chintalopoli, thank you so much for this time. Gonna I'll pass this over to you right now. Thank you, Director. Um, yes, everyone, thank you for joining us today. Um, before we get started formally, we'll take the roll. Um, I see that uh, Vice Chairman Lavelle, Councilman Lavelle is with us, Representative yeah. Imorato, uh, Director Powell, and Director Williamson. So all members are present and accounted for. Um, with that, our first order of business is approval of the November 10th, 2022 regular URA board meeting minutes. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed, any abstentions? The motion carries. Um, we did want to note uh, that the board did meet an executive session uh, to discuss personnel matters on November 18th. And then um, we also had an executive session on December 1st, where we reviewed uh, the operating budget that we will review later today, as well as some legal matters. Um, the next item on the agenda is public comment. Hi there. Um, our first public comment will be from Douglas Williams. Douglas, I'm going to uh, quickly get you into a position to speak. Um, so you should be able to speak now and you'll have uh, three minutes um, once you start speaking to uh, make your comment. And I'll let you know when you've got about 10 seconds or about 30 seconds left. Douglas, are you there? Uh, we will try Mr. Williams again in just a moment. Uh, I have a written public comment to read into the record. This is from Reverend Lee Walls. Um, and he writes, I wish to comment on the transfer of URA properties from the URA to the Housing Authority of the City of Pittsburgh. I want the board to note the inequity of the process of this transfer, especially in regards to those properties along Heron Avenue. I should mention this is in regards to Bedford Choice. Uh, Amani CDC has been working on the revitalization of Heron Avenue for over 15 years. Our organization and community partners in the Upper Hill District and neighboring streets have had little or no input as to the future development of these parcels. At an earlier meeting with correct development and the housing authority, I suggested a meeting to form plan and understanding that included community input, one that would create an MOU that addresses a common goal for the development of the quarter. The proposed development did not take into consideration the effects of an influx of denser residential renters, traffic changes, inclusion of business opportunities and more. Not only is this imperative to the consideration of this approval, but the transfer of these parcels by the URA differs from the normal process for other nonprofit developers and others. It calls into question for me the need for a larger discussion and creation of an implementation plan for how to approach blighted and vacant land in the Hill District and specifically Heron Avenue. I do not oppose the choice neighborhood project per se, However, we need to look to the we need to look to plan for a viable and equitable approach to the problem of land owned by the three taxing properties and creating affordable housing and homeownership opportunities in the hill. 
this must be the priority for moving forward in our community. Having said that, I am asking the board to require Trek and housing authority to address the many questions of the Hill District community and to enter into a formal MOU to partner with community partners. And secondly, the move forward that moving forward, the URA city and housing authorities facilitate a series of conversations that lead to an action plan that can be implemented to address this concern. Thank you. Now, um, I'm gonna see if Mr. William is again available. Can deliver. you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, you have- Mom, that took some time there. So, uh, Mr. Williams, you've got three minutes uh, to give your remarks, and I'll let you know when you've got about 30 seconds left. I come here today and thank the board for allowing me to speak. Uh, I am working on a project, a housing project that provides housing for returning citizens and also the homeless. Um, I'd love to ask why my project won't be advanced to the board for a vote. Uh, I had submitted all the required documents that were asked of me, and I am looking to ask the board would they be as so kind as to take a look at the items that were submitted and also look to grant me a grant of 300,000 for renovations of four row units, which in hotel, working with the black contractor, this project has been in the works working with neighborhood allies, Dollar Bank, and the URA for almost two years now. I have submitted letters of funding approval for this project of 300,000. Would you be so kind as to helping this project move forward involving funding? Thank you. Uh, that exhausts our registered public comment for today. Thank you, Daniel. Um, Mr. Williams, I know you, uh, separately, I know you've reached out to the team in the office here, um, the mayor's office, and they're working to find some time um, so that we can learn more about the project as well. Um, so thank you for, for coming to speak to the board today. Thank you. Moving along into the agenda um, announcements. Our first announcement um, is, is around the departure of um, our executive director, Greg Flissrum. Um, as everyone knows, uh, Greg has uh, made the decision to step down in the role of executive director at the end of this year. Um, unfortunately, he's not able to join us today, but spending some much uh, earned and deserved time with his family, you know, in advance of the holidays, um, as we all hope to do. Um, you know, I, I, I know some of the other board members will, will make some remarks um, that, that have worked with him, you know, longer uh, than I've had the opportunity over the past several months. But, um, you know, looking back on his tenure, um, you know, he, he, he really came into the organization at a time of transition, um, physical, right, into the new space. Uh, which has its own impacts on an organization, um, as well as leadership, obviously, uh, with him coming in um, and, and an organizational strategy, uh, which the, the board was getting ready to implement. Um, you throw into that a global pandemic, and it's hard to think of, you know, a, a, 
more sort of trying way to start your tenure. Um, I think, you know, as we look back and, you know, some of it's noted there on the slide of what the authority was able to accomplish over that time. And in particular, those two years of the pandemic, it's, it's really astounding when we specifically think about um, the support that the organization was able to pivot and really go all hands on deck around supporting and, and um, helping to get small businesses in the city through, you know, those impacts of the pandemic when, you know, PPP wasn't going far enough or the, those businesses that didn't have traditional banking relationships weren't able to access it. Um, it's, it's nothing short of remarkable. Um, you know, it's 359 loans and, you know, countless businesses, you know, within that that were impacted and those, like I said, that had the most trouble um, accessing traditional financing through that. Um, you know, he, as he said in, in, in the release and we've talked about, he's looking forward to moving back into the private sector. Um, and, you know, we wish him nothing but the best and thank him for the time um, in which he was able to help and, and steward the organization. Um, and, you know, the trust that, that he places in the board fully reiterates that we have in the team that we have at the URA to continue this work moving forward. Um, you know, we all are excited about what the future holds and look forward to working with you all um, as we continue to, to really build an equitable and just Pittsburgh uh, for our residents. So with that, um, I, I know other board members um, you know, have some remarks to make. So I will uh, turn the floor over to, to my fellow members. Sure. <clears throat> thank you, Kyle. Um, you actually mentioned what I wanted to highlight and sort of thank uh, Director Flissman for his time here, which was the fact that, as you stated, he got on the job and immediately the world changed, right? And he played a significant role in helping us pivot as an organization to keep people in their homes, keep people from being able to lose their businesses um, and all the other sort of equitable work we've done over the last three years. And so I just want to thank him for all that he was able to accomplish during his time here um, and thank the staff for working with him to assist with those pivots as well. Um, and he should be able to, he should hold his head very high for the work that this organization has accomplished over the last few years. Thank you, Councilman. Yeah, I would echo what, what both of you have already said. I mean, it's hard to imagine there, it's hard to imagine a three year period with, uh, you know, with more challenges and, and more transitions than than what the URA and URA leadership has, has experienced over the last three years. And, you know, and I think Greg's, Greg's leadership uh, helped us get through all of that. But, you know, to put a finer point on the on the COVID challenges, I mean, the URA was able to put money on the street to, to provide direct assistance to Pittsburghers, to homeowners, and to small businesses in particular before the state, before the federal government, before any other programs even existed, before, before PPE was an acronym that, uh, you know, that we would all come to, to, to know, uh, you know, the URA was, had stepped in and, and identified the need and identified ways to provide direct and immediate uh, support uh, that, that helped businesses stay alive. I mean, there are businesses that that are still open, still uh, employing people, still existing in the city today that would not be here if it weren't for the the work of the URA. And so, you know, as as Greg moves on to other endeavors in his career, we wish him the best best of luck and, and thank him for everything that he's done to to help shepherd the URA through these last several years. Um, you know, but it, but as Kyle said, none of that work would have happened without the incredible hard work and talent of the entire URA staff. Uh, and it's that knowledge that gives us as, as a board the absolute confidence that we'll be able to move on and continue to, to deliver for the people of Pittsburgh without missing a beat here. Thanks. Thanks. Hi there. The um, announcement. Yeah, go ahead, Daniel. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. Uh, hi there. This is Daniel Grant, the Executive Operations Coordinator, uh, letting the public know that the URA will be closed from December 26, 2022 through January 2nd, 2023. Uh, the offices will be closed during that time, but we will reopen for regular business on Tuesday, January 3rd, 2023. Thank you. Thank you.
a little preview of what we're going to cover today on today's agenda. Uh, the first item being in development services for Avenues of Hope, um, Center Avenue Studio Bolsey. Uh, joining us for this one will be Austerit to Clinton. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you, board, for having me today. Um, and thank you to the URI staff for helping put this presentation together. I'll start off with, even though there are two items here, Studio Volsi and Leche School, I will be presenting uh, for Studio Volsi. Um, Studio Volsi, also known as the Rhythm Square uh, Project, we are requesting authorization to enter into a proposal and formal contract for sale for 12 uh, lots located in the fifth ward. Um, in its regular 2020 meeting, the URA board uh, previously authorized Studio Volsi LLC to enter into exclusive negotiations um, the total project cost is estimated at 3.38 million. The project itself will be a mixed use development consisting of two existing renovation of two existing structures, the former home improvement and center builders lumber supply uh, warehouses at 2225 and 2239 Center Avenue respectively. The renovations will serve as a new headquarters for Studio Volsey Design and Development, which is also an M a woman and minority owned business. Um, and uh, also serve as space for uh, affordable commercial and um, affordable housing uh, as well. So it's a mixed use development. Since the board's February 2020 authorization, um, there has been significant pre-development work that has been completed, including preliminary drawings, WMBE, WI narrative, and fundraising, including a $500,000 grant to the Federal Home Loan Bank. Um, we are uh, asking for approval, um, contingent upon uh, several items uh, listed, to support that actual grant. Um, we wanna make sure that there is consistent site control um, and we are working diligently to make sure that these items will be completed uh, prior to uh, the complete authorization. Are there any questions? Thanks, Esther. I, I know uh, Alicia is with us too. I don't know if she had wanted to give her the chance to, if there was anything she'd like to add. Alicia, if you'd like to speak, the floor is yours. If not, um, I think we're open for questions from the board. I would just like to say thank you, everyone, for the opportunity. Um, and, you know, we are working diligently to make sure that we get all of the additional items submitted and continue with our fundraising efforts. So this is a really good step forward in the process. Thank you. I don't have any questions, just a quick comment. Um, thank you for helping to advance this forward. Um, this is the sort of development that the URA should be highlighting and continuing to do all over the city. I mean, you're, you're talking about uh, working with an African-American owned company and individuals not originally from Pittsburgh, but willing to now settle here, willing to open up their own business, um, willing to take on redevelopment in the neighborhood, willing to help grow their business here, um, which is going to employ more individuals, um, and then also while we're helping renovate a historical African-American neighborhood. So this is literally the ideal development. Um, so I just want to thank Alicia for her vision and thank you for helping advance this forward. Thank you. You're here. Um, I don't know if there are any other questions or comments from the board. Um, if not, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Great. The motion carries. Thank you both uh, for, for your work and excited to see the project moving forward. Hopefully we'll see you back here soon uh, with some good news on the grant and, and you know, advancing the project uh, to fruition. So well done. Thanks. Uh, next on the agenda is uh, Center Avenue, the Leche School. Um, joining us for this will be Nicholas Parson um, and Evan Miller. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nicholas Person. I'm a lending analyst in the residential lending department of the URA. And I'm here in front of the board today to request an acceptance of final drawings, final evidence of financing, and the authorization to execute a deed for the sale of the... Uh, actually, Daniel, are you able to go to the previous slide? Uh, for the, uh, well, on the previous slide, yes, thank you. 
uh, the following listed uh, parcels, blocks, and lots in the third ward to Lecce LLC for $30,000 plus costs. Next slide. The, now the sale of these parcels would be a component of a much larger rehabilitation project located, uh, or that would be known as the Lecce School Apartments. This project would be known, or sorry, located at the intersection of Cliff Street and Crawford Street in the Lower Hill section of the Hill District at the site of the former Lecce Elementary School. This is an incredibly large and beautiful building that was constructed in 1905 and has an incredible amount of detail and ornamentation that was added onto it in several decades over the previous century. The most notable being Art Deco paneling in the building's southern entrance facing Bedford Avenue. Now, why, and it was for these reasons of cultural and historical significance that the building was added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1986. But for, unfortunately, for one reason or another, the building was closed thereafter and has remained vacant for approximately 15 years. Now, even though the interior of the building is rather decrepit and in poor condition, the external frame or structure is well intact. And so I think it would be a shame and rather unfortunate to let this building go underutilized and continue to deteriorate. And so with that, the developer Beacon Communities saw an opportunity to utilize low income housing tax credits and historic rehabilitation tax credits to transform this building into affordable apartment units. In their plan, they will have 46 new units, uh, 38 of which we rented to tenants affordably um, with incomes no greater than 20, 50, and 60% of AMI. And it's not just the rehabilitation of this school. In, uh, the developer also has the intention of improving the surrounding area by building four new townhouses, as well as transforming the URA owned parcels of land into an urban garden and tot lot. Now, as some of the board members may recall, I had taken, I had presented this project to them back in early June, uh, requesting authorization to enter into a disposition contract and to enter into a rental gap program loan in the amount of $953,650 both of which were approved by them. And since then, the developer has been make, taking all the necessary steps uh, in order to get this project uh, to closing, including presenting to the URA their final evidence of financing and their final drawings, both of which have been approved, reviewed and approved by our MWBE compliance team and our quality controls and inspection team respectively. Uh, and so with that, I have now come to the board requesting authorization to execute a deed for the sale of these parcels. Um, thank you very much. Uh, before I open the floor to any questions and comments, I would now like to introduce Jennifer DiNardo, the Senior Development Director of Beacon Communities, to provide a few brief remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Nicholas. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we, we would like to thank the board uh, for their support for this project and the staff for all of their assistance in getting through the various layers. And um, Beacon is, you know, uh, very interested in adding this historic asset as renovated to our growing portfolio in the Pittsburgh area. And we're anxious to get underway. We think it's going to be a great, um, great looking development, plus serving um, many levels of affordable residents. Great. Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, thank you, Nicholas. Any questions or comments from the board? No? No. Excited to see it move along. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As Nicholas said, we saw this in June. Um, you know, it, it, exciting to be taking the final votes, um, you know, adding significant number of affordable units and, and rehabbing a, you know, historic school and community asset. So preserving that neighborhood fabric, um, you know, it's, it's ticks off most of the boxes Councilman Lavelle mentioned earlier. Um, so it's another good one to see uh, for the community there. So um, thank you all for your work on this um, and, and look forward to seeing the project uh, come to reality. So thank you. Um, with that, uh, we'll entertain a motion to approve. So move. We have a second. Aye. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? 
Great. The motion carries. Thank you. Uh, next. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda, we have a, a series of items under development services uh, for Hill District Bedford Dwellings Choice Implementation Grant. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Brandon Wilson, and I am a project manager in the URA's Development Services Unit, and I'm here to request authorization for a number of items related to the Choice Implementation Grant application for Bedford Dwellings. The, these items include the commitment of Avenues of Hope Commercial Real Estate Program uh, funding in the amount not to exceed 350000 and the Pittsburgh Business Fund in an amount not to exceed 400000 to supplement URA Choice programs. Authorization to enter into an option agreement with Reed Roberts Housing LP or a related entity for a period of 12 months for the sale of certain properties in the third ward for Bedford Choice Phase 1, also known as Reed Roberts. Authorization to enter into an option agreement with the Housing Authority of the City of Pittsburgh for a period of 12 months for the sale of certain properties in the fifth ward for Bedford Choice Phase 4, also known as Heron Avenue. Authorization to enter into a Choice Neighborhood Partnership implementation agreement with the City of Pittsburgh, the Housing Authority of the City of Pittsburgh, Trek Development Group or a related entity, and Allies and Ross Management and Development Corporation, and authorization to execute a tri-party agreement with Trek Development Group or a related entity and the Housing Authority of the City of Pittsburgh for activities related to the Bedford Choice Phase 1 project for Block 11 E, uh, Lot 350 in the Third Ward. Next slide, please. The Choice Neighborhoods Program is a highly competitive $50 million federal grant program with the goal of rebuilding distressed public housing and transforming the neighborhoods around the replacement housing over a seven year period. The Housing Authority of the City of Pittsburgh is the lead applicant and the application seeks to replace Bedford Dwellings, the oldest public housing in the City of Pittsburgh. The program consists of three components, housing, neighborhoods, and people. The Housing Authority of the City of Pittsburgh is the implementation entity for the housing component and is partnering with Trek Development to create 832 new units, 411 of which are replacement units for Bedford dwellings, 205 are market rate, and 210 are additional affordable units. The URA is the lead implementation entity for the neighborhood component. In this role, the URA will run three neighborhood improvement programs using choice money, known as Critical Community Improvements, or CCIs. The three CCIs will be homeowner facade repair and rehabilitation, creation of home ownership opportunities, and street level activation on center and Heron avenues to address commercial corridors of the neighborhood. A fourth CCI, a linear park to be constructed north of the rebuilt Bedford dwellings, will be implemented by the city's Department of Public Works in partnership with the URA. The partnership agreement details the roles and responsibilities of each of the co-applicants, including the Housing Authority, the City of Pittsburgh, the URA, and Allegheny County Department of Human Services, who will also serve as the implementation entity for the people component of the plan. Bill Gaddy of Trek Development, Castor Binion, Executive Director of the Housing Authority, and J.W. Kim and Alexis Narotsky, also of the Housing Authority, are on this call and have the opportunity to speak. Afterwards, I will be able to take any questions. Thank you, Brandon. Um, I, I would invite um, you know any of the the folks from the Housing Authority, the development team that that you mentioned. Um, if they have any you know additional comments um, or additions you know for the presentation they'd like to make before we open it up. While while we wait for them to provide whatever comment they have, I want to just make one point of emphasis, given the public comment that came in earlier, that we are not transferring land at this time relative to Heron Avenue. Um, rather, we're entering into an option agreement. In fact, um, we would have to have a long, intense design work and design efforts and conversations regarding the building out, potentially, of Heron Avenue. And in fact, we're probably about three, four years away, unfortunately, from being able to begin the process of attempting to transfer land. So I just want to let Reverend Walls um, and the rest of the community know that rest assured, we have lots of time to work with the community to ensure we get we get it right. That's Kirsten Ben from the Housing Authority City of Pittsburgh. Uh, you know, thank you for this opportunity and partners uh, here in the city of Pittsburgh. Uh, what Councilman just indicated, 
uh, is, is additional conversations that we have to continue with the URA and the community and, and our partners. But we work as one team here in Pittsburgh to be able to be able to get this $50 million grant. And I want to thank everyone who participated in this process. And like I said, this is a community, government, business, foundation, uh, all together working one to achieve one goal of receiving the imp implementation grant uh, for the city of Pittsburgh that will transform the hill. Thank you. Thank you, Director. Bill, it looks like you're trying to talk, but we can't we can't hear you. Them. There's, if there's yeah, any I'm questions, um, yeah, I sorry, Cass, I director opinion. I was I was giving Bill a chance to try to get his audio to work. It looked like okay, he if he fiddling around with it, but if there's yeah. any questions, uh, uh, people among my staff probably can answer. Any questions there related to track or to this um, Charles Neighborhood application? If anyone, if anyone have any questions? Sure. Um, any questions that or comments for the board from from the uh, board? Yeah, I, I think a lot of us um, on the board obviously are very familiar with uh, choice as we're, we're wrapping up Larmer Choice, but for the public and those listening, could you kind of go through next steps um, after we submit a uh, timeline and, and what we can, ex when we can expect to hear, possibly if you know that uh, at this point? Uh, we will submit the application uh... And I think it's uh, the HUD will develop a short list. And as we are selected for the short list, they will come out and do a visit uh, of the site and the community. At that time, we will work with all our uh, partners to introduce them to HUD and show that we are one team here in Pittsburgh that we feel that the Choice Neighborhood um, Award would be you know, best for Pittsburgh and, and why we deserve <laughs> to have the Choice Neighborhood a $50 million grant. Uh, it could take, after we submit the application, it could take from 90 to 120 days. Thank you, Dr. Bingham. Okay. Board, I just received a chat from uh, Bill. He just said, so sorry, I'm mobile. I echo Mr. Binion's comments. So I just wanted to make sure I provided that. Thank you, Director Harris. Um, I, I know that the, in terms of the community process for the, for the individual developments, um, respectively, you know, as, as Councilman Lavelle said, There'll be individual processes around each of those. Um, you know, Director Bayon, we know through the through the way that um, the process works. You know, with, with Larmer, you know that that there's also progress that's made between the time of application and the head site visit, um, et cetera. And then as things move along, um, I guess specifically though to the to the um, individual developments, the Reed Roberts. Um, you know, development's already gone through, you know, the community's DRP process um, for the subsequent phases, you know, uh, for, for the public's understanding. Um, is there, you know, commitment on behalf of the, the development team to, to take those projects similarly through the, the community's development uh, review panel process? Director 
Director JW. Yeah, thank you, Mr. JW. Uh, the RP process will be uh, will, will be ongoing for next five six phases. This is the first two phases. The Reed Roberts and the City's Edge got nine percent last month, and we got the RP approval before that. And we have a uh, five more phases to go, and we are gonna continue to work with the Hill CDC and then all RCOs four. I believe four RCOs, if not five, uh, we will we'll work with them and to make sure that we go through the DRP process and their support for all each phases. So this is a very strong application, choice neighbor wise. Typically, this is a one to 10 ratio, only 10% of the applicants get the, text, uh, the choice neighborhood. But this time, some people saying it'll be one to 20, maybe 5%, it's very competitive. But uh, our application already got two phases, 9% received, uh, awarded. So this is very competitive to HUD's eye. HUD, is, HUD thinks that this is really well, they will see that the city of Pittsburgh is really serious and they are capable of uh, fundraising for the initial phases, like we did in Latimer East Liberty. We got the first phase 9%, so they saw that very fair, favorably. So we have a very strong application, uh, but we have uh, less than 30 days to complete this application. So we cannot change much at this point, but we'll continue to work with the community weekly, monthly basis, next seven years to get this uh, plan done, uh, implementation done, I'm sorry. Um, I apologize if I missed this in Brandon's um, in comprehensive overview of, of the items before us, but um, for choice specifically, and, and, and I guess to Director Powell's question, but but also the way in which we're approaching this um, here, can you speak some um, as well to how there's a requirement for a one-to-one -one replacement on, on all the public housing units, um, as well as um, our, our commitment in the way that the phasing is, is gonna happen throughout this project to allow for a build first strategy uh, so that so that folks you know are able to to just move once. So it's um go ahead JW. No please go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So it's um we have a 411 units uh back for uh, low income public housing and we're going to replace with 832 uh, uh units is like I said going to take about 7 years. Uh, there will be mixed income uh, that serves all levels of workforce, uh, relocation of, of, of residents, and and you know and, and market rate. Uh, most time, people are concerned about relocation uh, here in Pittsburgh. You know, the team Pittsburgh have been able to relocate above eighty percent of the people back to uh, Larmer. You know, that's a very high number in this business. And that's normally, the, yeah, that's the highest in the nation. Yes. Oh, yeah, oh, oh we got the highest in the nation. Okay. Yeah, so we got the too. highest in the nation. So um, uh, people should not be concerned that we are demolishing buildings, but we will make sure that everyone who are the 411 on residents who are there, that they will be relocated back into this development for the one-to-one -one replacement. And we're going to build first, so that will reduce uh, uh, any concerns during the relocation process. And we do work with the school board and other partners to make sure that you know families are taken care of um, during the transition. Yes, that's right. Uh, I want to confirm that the first four or five phases will be done uh, off-site before we demolish the transit drive, the, the, the main portion of the bed for dwelling, before we demolish it. So people will have a ch chance to move once to the new new building, new new housing, new, new homes, yeah, rental homes. So this is the clearly the, 
hopefully the beginning of a very long process. Um, uh, and we, you know, I think generally we all feel pretty good about our chances given the, you know, the, the track record in Larmor and the incredibly successful implementation of, of the Larmor Choice Grant. Um, but could, uh, I don't know, Brandon, maybe could you go back to the five things that we're actually voting on today, just to remind us what's uh, what's actually proposed just for this initial action? Sure. So um, it is the commitment of Avenues of Hope Commercial Real Estate Program uh, funds in the amount not to exceed 350000 And these are on the previous slide. Um, the uh, Pittsburgh Business Fund in the amount in an amount not to exceed 400,000. And these are to supplement the URA Choice Programs or CCIs. Um, it is uh, authorization to enter into an option agreement um, with Reed Roberts LP for Bedford Choice Phase 1. Um, an authorization to enter into an option agreement with the Housing Authority of the City of Pittsburgh uh, for Bedford Choice Phase 4, Heron Avenue. Authorization to enter into a partnership uh, agreement with the city of Pittsburgh, the housing authority of the city of Pittsburgh, Trek Development Group, and Allies and Ross Management and Development Corporation, and then authorization to enter into a tri-party agreement with Trek Development Group or related entity, uh, and the housing authority of the city of Pittsburgh um, for uh, Bedford Choice Phase 1, specifically Block 11E, Lot 350. Thank you. And so again, these are actions necessary in order to be able to position ourselves to make the application to, to the federal government and hopefully secure tens of millions of dollars of, in, of investments for, for the Hill District and, uh, and, and the city. So in the hopes that this is a first step in a long and successful and impactful process, <laughs> I'll make a motion to, to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motions uh, carry. Um, thank you, Brandon. Um, thank you to the development team. Um, you know, as Sam and uh, the councilman said, this will be a long process. So hopefully, uh, you know, we're back um, talking about each development um, and, and sequence here uh, once there's a successful grant application. Um, but thank you all for the efforts. I know this has been uh, a Many hands, um, you know, not all that have joined us today, um, you know, on our team. So, you know, and staff. So, thank you for that. The housing authority, of the city, and, and so many others. So, um, thank you all. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda um, is the URA's 2023 operating budget. And joining us for this will be uh, our finance director, Demar Carter. Good afternoon. I'm Damar Carter, Director of Finance. I'm excited to present in 2022 the 2023 operating budget for your approval. The total budget for 2023 is $15,910,915 for your approval. Thank you, Damar. Um, any questions from the board? Councilman, you came off mute. Yeah, thank you. Um, no questions. First, I just want to thank uh, Ms. Carter for her hard work on getting us this budget. Um, I know she, she's done a lot to get us here, so thank you very much. Um, but also for the public's sort of edification, if you can see, the budget is actually tight, <laughs> right? Um, and so there's more demand than we actually have available resources. And it's just worth noting that even you know, as I don't, I don't know what the development is um, that was mentioned in public comment. But in asking, I know it was mentioned that he want he was looking for a three hundred thousand dollar grant. The reality is, we would love to do as much affordable housing development as humanly possible. The reality is, we just don't have all the resources necessary, and so many at times will think, and even some of my colleagues think that we're sort of just sitting on cash, and it's just simply not the case. Um, but we will absolutely accomplish as much as humanly possible with what we have. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Um, yeah, I would echo, um, uh, yeah, for Director Carter, thank you. 
um, and the staff that work with you, I know you, you did a lot of outreach to the departments uh, and involvement with them uh, through a process that, that was, um, you know, new, but, um, you know, I think uh, one that, that offered a lot of learnings and, um, you know, buy-in. Uh, so despite being thin, um, you know, it's one that, that I know we're confident in. Um, so it's, um, you know, thanks for bringing it forward for us today and for our consideration. Um, with that, um, I'll entertain a motion to approve our 2023 operating budget. So move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. We have a 2023 operating budget approved earlier than I think we've had ever. So yeah. again, <laughs> great work to the team all around. Thank you. Thank you so <laughs> much. And thank to all the directors that has helped um, and bend and dealt with me pushing. I appreciate it. Thank you all. Thank you. Um, next on the agenda is a uh, disclosures agenda. Um, before we entertain it in its entirety, I wanted to see if we have any walk on items for the disclosure agenda today. Yeah, yeah. thanks, Mr. Chair. This is uh, Tom Link, uh, Chief Development Officer. We do have an additional item for the dis disclosures agenda and I'll read it into the record, uh, both for the board and for the public. Um, so you know, you're a staff seeking authorization to approve a $3,034,202.40 change order with CPS Construction Group. Uh, November 2021, uh, the URA entered into a uh, 14,335,980 million uh, general construction services contract with CPS Construction Group, Inc. Uh, to construct the uh, Pittsburgh Technology Center parking garage. Uh, due to the presence of obstructions in the ground, um, there has been increased costs due to those obstructions, which are accounted for in the change order uh, noted above. So I wanted to note that here for the board and for the public. So thank you. Thank you, Chief Lane. Um, any questions from the board or, or discussion we want to have on, on that or any of the other uh, items on the disclosure agenda? Motion to approve. Okay. We have a motion on the table to approve the disclosure agenda in its entirety. Um, second. We have a second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries. Um, thank you. Thank you. We have a motion to adjourn. I think you cut out. There we go. Oh, I'm sorry. I said <laughs> all good. Second. Yeah, it's been spotty. There's been spotty uh, uh, internet at the city today, so I'm I'm thankful to, that we made it all the way through the meeting because we didn't have any this morning, um, and it's been on and off all day. So uh, that said, um, yeah, thankfully we made it through the meeting. But um, yeah, entertain a motion to adjourn. So so move. Second. Okay. We are adjourned. Um, thank you all for joining us. Yeah. Um, happy holidays. Happy New Year. Uh, and we'll, we'll see everyone in January. Yeah. Happy holidays. Thank you very much.